Hi friends. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May and this is my channel, Artist Design. I am a cross-stitch designer and artist and cross-stitch lover. <laughs> you can find my designs uh, at artistdesign.com. And as of this week, my first ever brick and mortar shop and online store to carry my charts is Threads Entwined. I'm so excited. Thank you, Trish, so much for this tremendous opportunity. I really appreciate it. I love it. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I am a mom of two and I love saving the stitches. I love cross stitch on all the forms. <laughs> and I got really into quilting this week, so we'll see. And if you're returning, I'm so happy and thankful that you came back to spend some time with me. Yay! <laughs> had a very busy week. I have a lot of chit chat for today and stories and I I swear it all pertains to cross stitch or stitching like quilting. I promise. <laughs> uh, this is a little Luna pug. She decides as soon as I start filming that she wants to be part of the show. So she is now I she's my little co-host. I, I pay her in treats and cuddles. Loki will probably make an appearance here pretty soon. He's, I don't know what that boy is doing. <laughs> I, I want to talk about this video, what I did this week. It was a jam packed week filled with stitching and fabric dyeing and oh, all the things. I have my whips to show you my works in progress and I started two new projects this week that I can show you. <laughs> I started two different quilt tops so I have that to show you. I went to the quilt show, the local quilt show, and I have that to show you so I'm not sure if you want to stick around at the end of the video I will insert my walkthrough of the quilt show. I have library books to show you and they are stitching related. They're like autumn and quilting related. So I'm so excited that you're here and let's get started. Yay. <laughs> All right. My, my Wednesday, I, my video posted last week. I do, you know, social media stuff with my kids and then I don't know, but I just decided to dye some fabric because I started a quilt. I started the pumpkin, a pumpkin quilt and I was going through my fabric stash and I realized, here, sweetheart, are you sitting with me? Here, right here. Can you sit here? Can you sit right here, baby? Can you, okay. I realized I don't have a whole lot of orange fabric. So I decided to dye some <laughs> and I, I'll show you all my projects here. Okay. so. On Wednesday, I dyed some fabric, and yes, I was trying to do kind of that like marble tie-dye effect. I got, I want to say like seven or eight yards of white fabric, and the selvage edge into like two inches on either side had yellowed a little bit. And I, I washed the fabric, and then I washed the whole like seven, eight yards of fabric, and then I cut off a strip to dye, and then I... I was doing that and I was having fun. I was like, I want to dye some more. <laughs> so I cut off another piece and I tried, and this is like an ombre look to it. So I was really happy with that. So I have it like the light to the, and then because I found this little fabric scra scrap at the very end, looking through my stuff and it was like a pale like 1982 color, like a yellow. And so I just threw that in the dye bath as well. So I have all these different oranges to work with my pumpkin quilt. So I did that on Wednesday and I had them out to dry and it was just really fun. I, I this piece I love so much. I don't know if, if I'm gonna cut it out or what I'm gonna do with it. 
Now I gotta figure out where to put all this stuff. I have a pug jockeying for my lap here. Okay, baby, here we go. All right, sweetie baby, can you just sit down, honey? Can you just sit? Can you sit your butt? I know, I know, I'm right here. Hi. Okay. Okay, let's show them. All right. At one of the thrift stores a couple weeks ago, I saw this piece of fabric. And I, well, it's not a piece of fabric. <laughs> I'm misspeaking. I saw this shirt and it's, it's like a medical scrubs shirt. And I loved it because it had the Mickey Mouse on it. And I was thinking about cutting up the shirt and using the fabric in a quilt for the kids. Or I was thinking, wouldn't this be fun as one of those travel organizers that you put in your vehicle on the back of the, the drivers and the passenger seats for the kids to have their little organizers and they can put stuff in. And I thought, wouldn't that be fun in an inexpensive way? So it's got Halloween. Hello, love Halloween. <laughs> and it's got Mickey Mouse. So I think I'm going to uh, upcycle that shirt and turn it into something. I don't know. <laughs> but I did because I couldn't wait. And also because my kids absolutely love sewing. It is so cute. They, like, I start to press their foot and then they press down on something. And then one sits and, like, helps me guide the fabric. And they go, I did it. I did it. It is the cutest thing ever. So, you know, they, they quilt and then at the end they go, look, I did it. <laughs> so, but they ge genuinely really did help me. I, and look at this. Okay. So they, I mean, they literally sit, one sits on my lap at all times. Like they'll, they'll go back and forth. So we made this little pumpkin square and it's, it's a little wonky. I'm not the best seamstress, full disclosure. I'm not the best seamstress. However, with two children jockeying and like trying to help, but I say those imperfections make this quilt amazing. I just love it. So we got our first pumpkin block done and I have more to add. We have more, but like I said, I just, I didn't really have any orange fabric. So I had cut out, uh, what I had and the purple and then this the stem I did some other stems and I'm so excited I'm using my little shaker boxes that I got I'm using them you all look at this look I'm using it so I have like one more pumpkin to sew up and I I changed out instead of using the gray I'm using the brown for the stem so I'm excited I'm hoping that we can work some more on the quilts. Like I said, the kids actually really enjoy it. They don't enjoy mommy at the iron because that takes forever. And they don't enjoy mommy with the, the rotary cutter because I'm like, don't put your hand near it. But when we're actually at the machine together, I did it and they love it. So I feel I'm, I'm really trying to make memories. That's one thing when I was younger, I really, wanted to learn and I, I don't know I my kids are showing an interest so I am trying really hard to be encouraging and optimistic and like yeah we'll do that so <laughs> the fun thing was is we started working on making a quilt top and they helped and we arranged again it took forever to, to to press and do and again i'm i'm new quilter and so i they helped me and we arranged the blocks with the strips each of us so i cut out the seven strips and i told them that the rule was just the green had to go in the center that was it we're, we're not working on any pattern. We don't have a plan other than let's just sew. And I wanted to keep it the long straight lines because I, I realized that with this block, we were having a hard time piecing and keeping it, everything together with little hands like wanting to touch it. So I ended up just using my three inch ruler and cutting long strips. And I, these strips are so fun. My husband went on Saturday to one of the big box stores and he came back with 
because I was, we started working on the project Wednesday, Thursday. So this was like early Saturday morning. He came back with all these like fat quarters for me. So <laughs> I learned you can make 30 three inch squares from one fat quarter. The more you know. <laughs> but I used the, and I was able to make the three inch and maximize all my fabric. So these are all from the big box store. And this pattern the, with the candy, that was the iteration of the big box stores from last year that I purchased and then never did anything with because I got two kids. So they laid out the pattern for this one. So we have six all together. And again, helped me sew. And then they're like, look, mommy, I did it. <laughs> so we got, and then this one. And we, we had so much fun. I said, okay, do you want the fabric to all lay in the same direction? Or do you want to have upside down pumpkins? Do you want upside down pumpkins? And then, Yay, let's have upside down pumpkins. <laughs> it was so fun. And then I said, okay. All right, do we want the candy to be upside down or the drinks to be upside down? Like, we want the drinks. Give us the drinks upside down. So, and again, they helped and we laid it all out. And then I used the sewing clips and they'll say, can you hand me a clip? I'd like a green clip. I'd like a blue clip. I'd like a purple clip. And so we've been working on colors and then counting how many clips we put on one strip. And it's just been so fun. So here is the other three that I did. Again, just very basic. So I, I used up all the fat quarters except for those two that I got that are duplicates because I really liked them. And I don't know what I'm gonna do. We might, I don't, I don't know, but I love it. So that that's my, those are my, my quilting whips for the week, the dyeing and the quilting. Thir Wednesday I, I dyed. Thursday, we went out to the thrift store. I didn't get this last week, but we went out and the coolest thing ever, I walk into this thrift store with my kids and someone behind the counter goes, I know you. I'm like, yeah, hi, I'm Amanda. No, I know you from Floss Tube. What? I, <laughs> it was so awesome. So hi, PJ Stitcher, <laughs> if you're watching. Yay! <laughs> I got to, I met someone and it was great. I uh, so we we shopped a little bit and then PJ Stitcher was like, "Hey, you need are you coming to the quilt show tomorrow and Saturday?" I'm like, "Quilt show? Sign me up." I totally did not know. <laughs> so I came so I said I'm going to do my best. So I came home, we planned it, I looked it up. I did all the things, right? So Friday morning, bright and early, we got up. I got dressed. I wore my little quilted bear vest. It is so cute. I didn't grab it. I'll have to grab it. Anyway, I put on my little quilted bear vest that I did not make. It's like a little fishing puff vest. Um, looks like one of those sewing panel vests. And so I wore that and the kids and we, so we had the stroller and the snacks and all the things. And we go, we get to the quilt shop and I am literally a kid in the candy store, right? I'm like, I want it all. <laughs> I'm like, calm down, calm down. <laughs> I had way too much fun. And again, I'm going to insert a video of it at the end. And it was great. I was concerned about the kids going to the quilt show and not touching anything because the quilts, I mean, there are volunteers at the guild show that wear the white gloves and will help you. And so you can see the front and the back piecing of the quilt and talk to you about the quilt. Is it an artist quilt or traditional and different things? And so I was really concerned about them touching and they didn't, they listened. We talked about it. We talked anyway. It is so great. We did that on Friday. Saturday, my kid really wanted a haircut and has been asking for months. Literally, the Maryland wool and sheep, the fiber festival that I went to a couple months ago, my phone died at that festival. 
So we drove to the Columbia Mall and I got my new phone. Well, at the Columbia Mall, they have a haircutting place specifically for children. And my kid had asked to go there. So we made a trip down on Saturday to do that. And that was really cool. And we got the haircut. And then we ended up going to the Habitat for Humanity Restore, which is a big warehouse with all the things. I went in hoping to find some crafting supply stuff and I, I walked away with this awesome tray which of course I have all my stuff to show you on it. I'll show you at the end this tray. It's gorgeous and I love it. Very folk arty. I don't know what my style is anymore. The more I do floss tube I'm like bringing home this thing with the folk art. I've got I'm like am I mid-century? Am I folk art? What am I? I don't know. I feel like an eclectic artist having an existential creative crisis. No, <laughs> not a creative crisis. But I, I guess I just call myself eclectic, right? A maximalist eclectic Marylander. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> anyway, the quilt show was great. Saturday was great. We went to our favorite Mexican food restaurant. We try. I tried to find cross stitch. Oh, what? I tried to find cross. I did find cross stitch. What am I saying? This lady. My husband took me to the stitching post. Hello. <sighs> I went to the stitching post. It was not planned. My kids did fantastic. I ended up going and grabbing a bunch of supplies and kidding stuff and all the things. And you walk into the stitching post and it's huge. It is legitimately huge. And it's overwhelming. And you want all the things, and but you have a budget. I gave myself a budget. And I was literally so excited, I could not speak. Sometimes my mind goes faster than the words can come out. And I literally was paralyzed in speaking. I'm a, I mean, I just could not. I could not. That's how wonderful the stitching post was. <laughs> I have my haul to show you. It's buried under everything else in here. Holy guacamole. I'm gonna pause this video, I'll be right back. I had to go get my vest. I couldn't help it, I had to show you. So here it is. I got this little puffy vest. It's got little bears on it and little, <laughs> so cute. So I wore this to the, <laughs> to the quilt show. It was so fun. I love it. If you can't have fun, then what's the point, right? I got, what else did I get at the quilt show? Okay. I got a cross stitch. I feel like I can't call it save the stitches though, because it was a beautifully curated collection of stuff by the Four Counties Quilters Guild. And they were selling things and they, so they had a beautiful collection of cross stitch up on the wall for sale. And I got this piece again. I don't, I don't think it's a save the stitches because I got it like at a, like a boutique shop. Right. So but look at this. I love it. I love it so much. So I put this, it says freedom for the, from C to C. And I feel like it checks all the boxes for me. It's patriotic. It's on this beautiful blue linen. It has red and in the variegated variegation of the red. It has a charm who can't resist a good charm. It's got the folk arty look. It's framed. I mean, it's just really cute. And it's it's dated SW97. And it's titled We Won and a uh, Sue in 1997 stitched it. And I love it and I feel like I've rehomed it and I I just I really like it. So I had to buy it. I I I went with my $20 a week budget to the craft to the quilt show. It was a $10 entry fee for a 2-day pass and I know I knew I was only going for the one day, but the kids were free admission. I quickly ran out of money. I bought three things, four things. I bought, uh, my kids each got a little, a little present and I got these buttons, the, the B company buttons and they're, they're 
little witch's hats and they're painted and the, the, the wood and it's cut out. I love these so much. I got these from the Primitive Homespuns booth. She is, her name is Kathy and she has a shop, a wool felt and prim, two different shops, like a home goods shop and then like a stitching shop, right? In Frederick, Maryland. And I have, that was the first shop I ever went to where I bought over dyed floss. The first time ever I saw like the gentle art threads. So her booth was gorgeous. You'll see in the, the video, uh, some of her stuff from her booth. And I met her for the first time and it was just really cool. So I, I got those buttons. I got that, the cross stitch. And then I got this fabric from a different fat, like from a different booth. And I love it so much. And it's got the spell recipes and like the apothecary jars and the jack-o'-lanterns and it's orange. And it's, I just really like it. So I got to figure out what I'm doing with that. It, I literally walked into that boutique at the end with $8 in my pocket because I had spent on the buttons and then this and my entry fee. Like I have $8 and they're coming up to my kids going, oh, do you want this? Do you want that? I go, no, I only have $8. They go, oh no, we accept checks. I'm thinking to myself, I am a millennial. I don't carry checks. And I felt so bad. I didn't say that, but I'm thinking, okay, that I, Apparently I need to, no, it would be dangerous. It would be dangerous if I carried a checkbook around. <sighs> anyway, I get $8 and I, and this was priced at $5, which I feel like $5 was more than I, that was very fair, right? Like, I'm like, really only $5? And so <sighs> five dollars but then they were giving my kids all this stuff and I go no 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 no. you can buy one thing so they each got like a little chicken and I'm literally down at the wire like counting out my pennies and my dimes because I, <laughs> I didn't have any more money uh, so thank you for County's Quilters Guild for taking my pennies and providing me with cross stitch thank you <laughs> all right that's my haul from the quilt show and then I got two packages okay so so the stitching post stuff and then I got my package from threads and twined I had placed an order with Trish and I got my stuff because I want to you know hashtag start all the things so I have I, I couldn't wait for my video so I started it so you're gonna see what I started in my highly technical something like a makeup case thing I got at the thrift store I know. Shocking. Amanda May shops at the thrift store. Hi. <laughs> All right. I, I decided that I needed to get on my black bird design B U T T and figure out and fi not figure out. I have loved their patterns. I have one of their Thanksgiving, like the thankful patterns. I have a couple Blackbird and I haven't stitched them yet. And I said, I need to stitch something from Blackbird, but I don't want a huge commitment, right? I don't want to, I've got other, I've got, I got stuff to do, but I love their work. So I, I picked up this small piece, the fairy garden, the, and it's the garden club series number 11. And I love it. And I feel like, this being my first ever Blackbird Designs stitch, I could not, in good conscience, do a thread conversion because I need to see the genius of Blackbird's design and just buy the overdyed floss. There it is. And Trish, look at this. She used the Diana... It is Kismet Stitches method of the ring. And I love it. And I need more of these rings in my life. And Trish, you're a genius. Genius. So these are all the called for threads. So I ordered all of these from Trish. 
and I love them. So the called for threads are maple syrup, toasted barley, throwing my paper around, old red paint, lamb's wool, very gentle, beautiful colors, dried thyme, terracotta, burlap, and the antique rose. Yep, antique rose. So I just, these are so beautiful. And again, this, these are gorgeous, but when I, you know, going and picking threads, I would never pick this palette for myself, but I more than happy to stitch somebody else's design with it. Right. I just, I love it. So I am stitching this on a piece of, what is this piece? Oh, it's from Kitten Stitcher. It is a piece of Winter Moon, one of her boutique hand-dyed small batch pieces of fabric. When I was featured in her online magazine, she asked, do I want to get paid in cash or do I want a store credit? And I said, store credit, please, because I had been eyeing, I eyeing her fabrics and I wanted her fabrics and so I took a store credit. <laughs> so this is her winter moon fabric and this is my start. I started up in the upper left hand corner with the antique rose and I started filling in the center flower motif and I've started in with the basket and I'm very happy with this so far. I love it so much. Again this is the fairy garden. So the only thing that I'm not doing that I called for is the fabric, but I feel like I made a really good choice in choosing this. This is, I want to say this is a 32 count by Teresa Vanette of kittenstitcher.com. Let me see. She puts the little tag on. Yeah. So this is her 32 count winter moon. So this is the piece. And... Someone had asked if I would do a tutorial of how I stitch in hand, and yes, I will. And uh, sooner rather than later. But what I will tell you that you can, if you are stitching in hand, I like to roll up my fabric as you saw from the beginning. And then when I stitch, uh, I'm right-handed. I'm a right-handed stitcher. And then I hold, and I either use my middle finger to help. I don't know if you can see it there or my index finger. Oh, and I see a pug. Hi. Hi. Do you want to say hello? Do you want to say hello? Hi. Come on. You want to say hi? Hi. <gasps> hi. Hi. Where do my threads go? I don't want you to get tangled in my threads. Well, hello. Hi. You want to say hi, floss tube? Hi, floss tube. See, I am so cute. I am the quintessential pug. I snore. I like treats. I like to lick. I'm part cat though, so I feel, <laughs> he's a quirky little one. He really is. <laughs> Dropping stuff everywhere. So again, in my highly technical Clinique makeup case that once housed probably a toy or something from the thrift store <laughs> is my first project that I got. Look at this raccoon. It is like, it is getting the next thing I started stitching. I feel like this is like a tribute to Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Hashtag fangirling hard. Hard fangirl over here. All right. I couldn't stand it any longer. It just had to get started. I started the Here Lie My Needles pattern. I have it in my bag from Express Life Tiffa. It is my one and only official project bag that I currently own. Although that's about to change because Erica D. House of Stars Hollow Stitchery. She's Erica D. House on Instagram and on FlossTube. Go, go follow her. She made me two project bags. I got one of her Halloween themed bags and then I sent her my custom fabric that I showed you, my Boo Bees apiary fabric. I sent her my fabric and she made it into a project bag. Ah! It's on the way to me as we speak. 
so I don't have it to show you. But as of next week, I will have three official project bags and I am so excited. Okay. All right, in my project bag, clearly lots of notes. Let me get, get that pattern out. <laughs> All right, here we go. I swear I'm prepared. I swear. Okay, here it is. Here lie my needles. And this was a market release for 2018. And I saw Michelle Garrett, Mindy Stitchy, stitching this last year. And I just love it. I like the idea. It talks about there's a piece of tofu here next to the fox about the Japanese tradition. And I, I'm not, I apologize. I don't know this, the ceremony name, but at the end of the year, needle workers take all of their, their needles that they've used throughout the year that have broken rust bent and they place it in the tofu. And I just thought that was really cool. So I had to do it. I had to stitch it. I converted it all to sulky 12 weight cotton petites and full disclosure, this is in a, oh, it's in a makeup pouch. And <laughs> this is a combination of the threads for my original, my sampler adaptation that I am creating, my 1839 sampler and then this stitch I, I after doing the sulky conversion from her called for dmc to the sulky there was actually a surprisingly amount of overlap between my palette for my own design and teresa's palette <sighs> what do they say they i don't know and this is i don't know what they say but Fun fact, I now have two pairs of red scissors. I got my one pair, this pair, when at the Stitching Post when I went there for my birthday in February. And then I got the uh, one of the boxes this year. <laughs> I got another pair of red scissors. I'm thinking, out of all the scissors in all the land, I get two of the exact same red. <laughs> and this is my fun little... Uh, keychain it has got little bling on it i just love it okay i will throw it i will throw it let let it go let it go okay oh and then i'm working on something right now i have to show you this one though okay, okay. this is the victorian let me see if it'll focus this is the victorian christmas blendables I love it. Victorian Christmas. And it, the, the colors are really pretty. And the palette is very much of the, the hairline of my needles. So I thought that was really neat. This is Sulky 712. And of course, it's not going to focus. Um, 4112. Anyway, Victorian Christmas. So I have that. Right. So without further ado, here is my new start. And I'm so excited. So here lie my needles. And I've got the center urn done. I am stitching this on my own hand dyed 18 count Ada fabric. As you can see here, the center here is the urn. And so I'm gonna start going up in the, it's like a deep charcoal brown uh, to go up this way. And I am so excited. I love it so much. and. I don't know what to do though, because apparently I hand dyed my fabric the same color as the urn. I don't know if you can see that there, but I, I literally, it's the same color. So I'm not sure if I need to backstitch or if I should stitch a different color over it, but it looks like I've done the inverse of this. So her accent color down here, for where you put your broken and your broken needles, some bent, some broken, some rusty. Down here is what I did my primary color as. So I inverted it and I wasn't even I wasn't even trying to match my fabric to the floss, but I it happened. 
Anyway, I love it. I, I am an equal opportunity stitcher. I like Ada and I like linen. I, I do, I have noticed though that with Ada and Sulky, stitching on 14 count is not my favorite. I prefer 16 count or an 18 count Ada fabric. And this is 18 count. And again, I love it. And I'm stitching this also in hand. And you can see I've clipped my sewing clips down. Let me put that back in my project bag. Thank you again, Tiffany. You're a gem. All right, so that's in here. And I felt, well, I don't know, I love it. I have another project that I'm working on that I can't show you. Um, but it's got all the colors and it's on a week's fabric. I have my Canada bag from Jill in Canada. Hi, Jill. I put stuff in this, I swear. And then I think it all migrated into here. Another project I'm working on, it's on black because at night, apparently I like to stitch on black fabric at night. My here lie my needles is in my zip and I have no progress in this other than to show you this and say I have no progress. What else do I have? I have in my rainbow bag, no progress. I can't show you that either. Oh my goodness. All right, I thought I had a bunch of stuff to show you and all of a sudden they don't. Oh, I do have stuff to show you. Okay, I'm gonna shut my mouth. Okay. <laughs> I am working on something right now. That's my color palette. Yes, that is my color palette and I love it. I have it, I put it and I arranged it here so that the babies and the pugs won't grab it. I need to fix that but I got my very own copy this it was in my haul this week my blackbirds design home for the holidays book I love this so much and what I really like and what I appreciate about this book it's 38 pages full color the alphabet stockings the mini mini stockings right here so darn cute it's got the cardinal that everyone was stitching last year. I know Donna Ray and I want to say Amy Loves Toads and everyone was stitching this and I had Stitch Envy. Yes, it's a real thing. And so I finally got my little booty and gear and I ordered this for myself. But what I really like and I what I appreciate about this collection of Christmas stitching, like this one is so beautiful the dove in the house is that if you are not religious this has non-religious stitching f f holidays instead of christmas base which i really like and i appreciate so i got that threads entwined had the book all the thread all of these bright threads came from the stitching post when i went on saturday I got this from Threads Entwined, the new copy of The Autumn Dream. And I didn't know what fabric I wanted to stitch this on. I took my pattern and everything. Again, it was spur of the moment that we went to the stitching post on Saturday. And I knew I wanted to, I'm working on some brand new designs. So I knew I wanted to get some of the over dyed flosses there and some fabrics there for my new designs and again impulse spur of the moment I didn't think about getting the floss for this it just just did not did not occur to me so I did get the fabric however so I have the fabric I don't have the floss and that's okay because I've started two new projects this week this one can wait I can't so what else did I get I got a blue and it's ice blue Belfast linen. I got this green. It's, oh, sorry, not green. Amsterdam blue, which I really like. 
I got this green. Look at this green. That's coming up pretty true, actually. This is a Belfast Zweigart Light Lime. I got... What else did I get? Oh, I got a little piece of black linen because, again, apparently at 11.30 at night, I like to stitch on black fabric. <laughs> and then I decided on this piece of fabric. It is a 32 count toasted almond Belfast linen. So this is what I chose, the toasted almond for the Autumn Dream. Autumn Dream calls for the Sangine, the Weeks Dye Works sang Sangreen, Sangine, Sangine. I apologize. I am just not saying that correctly. And I decided on this, I gave myself a two inch border. So they said stitch, stitched on 32 count that my approximate design size will be a 10 by 10. Factor in a two inch margin all the way around, I would need a 14 by 14 piece of fabric. Originally, I wanted to give myself a three inch margin because I don't want to dance with danger. Okay, so I wanted a three inch margin, but this piece of fabric, they didn't have a three inch. They only, it had, they, it was, um, a four. this is the last piece that I got. So it was 14 inches. So on one side, it's going to be a two inch, but I, they gave me a, a little bit of a longer piece. And as a new stitcher, I will say that I've only shopped at a very small select group of stitching shops. And I will say that I have quickly learned that each shop has their own rule about their minimum fabric cuts. And what does that mean? Well, some shops will only sell like the fat eights or the, the long eight yards of fabric. Some shops will, will sell you a minimum of a nine inch by nine inch square of fabric. And other ones will have what they call the package fold, which is this. This is the smallest cut that that the stitching post will do. And I believe it's a 12 by 15 inch cut of fabric. Dying to stitch, their R&R, &R, dying to stitch is based, oh, excuse me, R&R &R fabrics is the same, the same owners as dying to stitch, Ann and Pat, the partners. So their minimum count cut for R&R &R fabrics is a nine inch by nine inch. Keep that in mind with who, with, when you're shopping with your stores is that there are different minimum cuts allowed. So just, just throwing that out there. If you're a new stitcher, I'm a new stitcher. My seasoned stitchers who are watching, you're probably all going, tell me something I don't know. In which case, I appreciate you staying and listening to me ramble about this stuff. <laughs> are you ready for library books? I'm so excited. This is really fun. Okay, I have it on my new tray that I got. Well, new to me, this is the tray that I got at Restore in Columbia. Look at this painted. It's got little acorns on it. I love it so much. It's a nice big tray. It doesn't have a maker's mark or anything on it, but I love it. So this is what, that was part of my haul, haul this week. So let me set my tray down. <laughs> It's the little things in life, I tell ya. I, I love it. I went to the library and I got three new books and they are all inspired by the fall and Halloween, except for this book. I got Soft Fonts, 20 Sewing Projects with Words and Letters. And this is really fun. I I perused it. It's got like the case and different things that you can do with, with your with fonts. I don't see myself working on that this year, so I'm gonna go ahead and return that book, but it was still cool to look at. I got this book and it's in an embroidery book. And oh, 
the projects in here are exquisite and the color palette looks very much of the blackbird design color palette that i sh anyway <laughs> the gentle art sampler thread color palette this is stitches from the garden hand embroidery inspired by nature and it's by kathy schmitz and these are just some of the projects the red work this is a pen and this acorn needle book they had me at acorn needle book so this book this is the book stitches from the garden i really liked the acorn needle case i'm trying to find it here to show you while holding a pug i don't know how okay here we go here we go i love this one so much i want to do this one right here i love it i have never done embroidery but i feel like the more i look at the books the more i just need to take the time and learn how to do it and the last project again was the magnetic needle keep i can't show the pattern again i really liked this book the next book that i want to feature is festive fall quilts 21 fun applique projects for halloween thanksgiving and more awesome i do not want to stitch anything for thanksgiving however look at some of these projects can you tell that i like look at all of that i marked it all this is the jacks look at those little faces yes please so cute so clearly i need to learn applique because i keep picking up these books there's the sunflower oh, i love it and there is this one autumn splendor i think this one is my favorite i have to show you sideways though so there's no pat look at that with the applique around oh love that and the colors are so pretty and it's got sunflower and pumpkins and birds and leaves this one is just batty. I love little bats. Oh, they're so cute. And bats are so important. And not all bats are black. Look at this one. I have an octagonal table. I think I've told you all before. It's a 1974 octagonal table. Hello, mid-century. Nice to meet ya. I think I need to stitch this. Because I, did I, or did I not say I need an octagonal centerpiece for my table? Well, there it is. <laughs> the next one is, look at those little faces. The pumpkin faces are getting me, man. Look at those, look at those teeth. <laughs> so cute. This book comes with the patterns. And they had it, you know, where it's part of the book and the library puts them there. I am so scared with the two young kids so I clipped them so I don't lose the patterns and like I said I think I like every single project in this book apart from the turkey and it's not just I'm not a I, I don't like Thanksgiving stuff. Fun fact for my friends that are not uh, that do not reside in the United States when the United States was going to you know, choose our national bird. The bald, bald eagle was not the first choice. Did you know that the first choice, well, one of the first choices for our national bird was the turkey. Isn't that interesting? And it wasn't until just a couple years ago that they named our national mammal is the American bison. The more you know, America. The next book is the Modern Halloween. It's so a modern Halloween. Make 15 spooky projects for your home. Quilts, gift bags, runners, bunting, and more. I love a good bunting. <laughs> so there's this little ghost I thought was cute. And I went through my stash and I realized I don't have any black and white fabric. I don't goals I guess I liked this a pillow and there's an iteration in here for a blanket but it's using all of the selvage from your other projects and you cut it all away and then you sew it into making the spider's web from your fabric selvage which I think is awesome because I believe in you know using up all your scraps and stuff so the one of the first projects in here is scrappy jack 
and I really liked, look at that little face with again, orange. Apparently I'm in my orange and yellow phase of life. I don't know. And here the bunting with the skull I thought was really cool. So they give the pattern for that in here. And last but not least here, the selvage. Here is it just using strips of fabric and not the selvage, but then here is isn't that great? And then there's like the baddie gift bags and some other good stuff in there. I ha must admit that I have pretty much <laughs> checked out all of the cross stitch books that my library and the consortium of libraries around me has to offer. So let me know about down below if there is any books that you would like me to feature on my channel that are crafting related and not necessarily cross stitch related. Because like I said, I have, I've checked them all out. <laughs> I... <laughs> Libraries. I think what the moral of the story is, we just need more cross stitch books. Oh, and go check out uh, Minnie Gray. She just did a flip through of the new craft ways Christmas book. I will link her channel below. Go see that. That book is awesome. Does my library have it? No. It looks amazing though. All right. <laughs> what else? I'm, I'm going to insert the video of my quilting walk by and I will say that the camera is a little bit jostly. I am pushing a stroller with one hand holding on to a toddler with the other half hand while filming one handed. How many hands is that? Anyway, in the words of, oh, I can't even wax poetically about this. The camera jostles a little bit. I did my best. The quilts are beautiful. If you'd like to, to look at it, I want to thank all of you for your tremendous well wishes on the announcement that Just Cross Stitch Magazine chose me, me, as one of their 2019 Christmas Ornament Contest winners. I'm so excited. I cannot show you the design. You have to wait until October 29th of this year, so what, two months from now, for the December release of the December for the release of the December issue of Just Cross Stitch Magazine to see my winning design. I'm so excited. I am not in the Christmas special edition issue, if that makes sense. So the ornament issue, the Christmas ornament issue, I am not being featured in that issue. That's coming out, I believe, in September. I'm going to be in the December issue, which I do not know what the theme of that issue is. But my little picture of my design will be in there at somewhere. <laughs> and I'm so excited. I want to thank Allie for encouraging me to look into the ornament contest and for encouraging me to enter. I did. I drafted a pattern, followed the guidelines for entering an ornament. I finished it, photographed it, did all the things and submitted it. And I was picked as one of the winners. So I want to congratulate the other five stitchers who also had an ornament chosen. And so there's six of us and I, one is in Canada and the rest of us are from the United States. So six of us are winners of the ornament contest. Eh? Yay! So with that winning, I got a, I'm getting a prize package in the mail. You know what that means? Y'all, I'm going to do an unboxing video. I am. I am. So stay tuned for that. I'm hoping in the next month or two, hopefully less than two months, <laughs> I will be able to do an unboxing of all the goodies that I got as a prize for winning the contest. Thank you all again for your tremendous support. Thank you for following me on social media. Thank you for watching my videos 
and for stitchy kindness and all the things. Thank you again, Threads Entwined, for being so awesome and carrying my patterns. I, it's been a really amazing week, and I am so thankful for all of you. I hope that you have a week filled with stitching and love and warmth. Remember that I appreciate you and the work that you do. Until next week, take care, my friends. Here we go. We're going to do a walk through of the Four Counties Quilt Guild exhibition for 2019 of all of the beautiful quilts that I was able to view and photograph. It was just a wonderful time here in Mount Airy, Maryland. Ready? Wow, I like the colors on that one. Isn't that neat? And then here, hold on, over here. Over here. Wow, and there's all the purples. Oh, I like that one. Look at that. It's like got a star. It's called Diamonds Are Forever. Oh, and then look at this one. It's like a bouquet of flowers. Uh huh. And look at this one. This one is Linda's flowers. That's gorgeous. Don't push it towards the quilt, babe. Okay. Back. Oh, and Bigfoot. Oh, look at that. Okay. Yeah, but don't touch it. Uh 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 uh. Back up. No touching. Just look with your eyes. Okay. Isn't that awesome? Is that Bigfoot? Wow. Oh, look at the bear. Isn't that pretty? Wow. Is that a kitty cat? Wonderful. I like Bigfoot. That's fun. Okay, and the horses. Oh, and look at this one. And we're going to turn that around. Look at that one. It's a glacier goat. I'm right here. You see those horses? Oh, those so pretty. Wow. That's so pretty. Okay, let's go see what else they have. Oh, I don't. It's okay. Oh, more horses? Okay. Oh, look at the wildflowers. Isn't that pretty? Do you see where's do you see there's an owl and there's a bunny rabbit in the corner? Do you see the bunny rabbit? Wow. Where's the bumblebee? Don't touch it right there. Wow. Wow. Don't touch it. Uh-uh. Look with your eyes. Look with your eyes. Wow, so pretty. Wow. Okay. Okay, here, let's get out of the way. And then, oh, that's pretty. I... Okay. What, honey? Okay. Isn't that neat with the dogs and the hunting? Oh, wow, that's so pretty. Come over here. That's so pretty. There's a traditional. Yeah? Oh, I like this one with the colors. What, baby? Traditional. Yeah, baby. 
I'm right here. Push you, push you. Yeah. Okay, honey. Oh, that's so pretty. Aren't they pretty? I'm gonna push you, honey. I'm just trying to, I don't wanna get anybody in the picture, honey. Wow. Look at that one. Oh, I like this one. Look at this one. Look at this one with the circles. Look at this one with the circles, honey. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? That's right. Wow, that is so pretty. Wow. So pretty. I love this one. Who moved my cheese? What? What? I'm gonna push you. I gotta turn around. Hold on, hold on. Back up, back up. Oh, look at the pretty purples. Oh, I like this one. It's got the heart in the center. Do you see that heart? Can you see all those heart? All those hearts? Okay, wow. So pretty. I like that. Make sure and vote for your favorites. All of our members have participated in this, and we want to thank everyone here today from the membership who is volunteering. Isn't that great? Isn't that so pretty? Yeah. Wow, that I love that one. I think that one's my favorite. Yeah? What? Yeah, all those squares. And then here's another one of those flowers. Okay, perfect. That is so cute. And it's got some red work. That's really fun. Wow. Look at that. Oh, that's so you know, cool. Do you, know what, do you know what this is right here? Do you know what that is? What is that? What is that? Oh my goodness, isn't that the cutest? Oh, what a good job, babies. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Look at all of that. Wow. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, and that looks like a real sushi. Yeah, doesn't it? That's really cool.
did not look upstairs. You want to go look upstairs? Yeah, we need to pick an elevator.